on this week's Glanbier Ireland Dairy Focus podcast. We'll hear from our Senior Sustainability Manager Thomas Ryan and Trevor Donlan of Chagas speaking about the National Sustainability Report and we'll also get the latest in the Cell Check Animal Health Ireland video series. Hello everybody, it's Thomas Ryan here. Sustainable farming practice is very much part of everyday farming life these days. In Glanbia, Ireland, through initiatives including the Open Source Future Farms, the 2020 Beef Club and the ASA programme, we continue to support you build on your good sustainability actions at farm level. So this week, uh, we take stock when it comes to sustainability and we catch up with Trevor Donlan. Trevor is one of the authors of the National Sustainability Report. So Trevor, uh, can you let us know what is the Chagas National Sustainability Report and why is it of interest to farmers? The Chagas Sustainability Report is based on data from the Chagas National Farm Survey and what it does is it aims to collect data from about 900 farms across the country representative of the farm population in this country and to examine three different aspects in relation to agriculture the economic sustainability, the environmental sustainability and the social sustainability. Uh, Thank you Trevor. And maybe can you tell us what are some of the key messages contained within the sustainability report? Over the last two years the typical dairy farm has been recording an income in the region of 60 to 70 thousand euro and we've seen the average size of a dairy farm increase to the point now where the average is just over uh, 80 cows. The emissions on those farms are going up however as well. If we just look at for example the greenhouse gas emissions, they've increased now to the point where the average dairy farm is producing over 500 tonnes of emissions per year. So when you break that down to a kind of a per hectare figure you would typically see the average dairy farm producing maybe uh, 10 tonnes of CO2 equivalent, carbon dioxide equivalent, uh, greenhouse gas emissions um, per hectare every year. And that figure is substantially more than what we would see on dry stock farms. So on a beef farm or a sheep farm, we would expect that figure to be about three or four tonnes um, per hectare. And that would be bigger still compared to a tillage farm, tillage farms in Ireland. Uh, do keep some livestock typically uh, when you factor that in the greenhouse gas emissions on a um, carbon basis are about two tons per hectare. Okay clearly there are many challenges. Are there some positive messages that perhaps you'd call out within the report? I guess the positive messages coming out of the sustainability report when we look at what's been happening over time is that we don't see emissions having increased uh, on a per hectare basis or or on a per farm basis for most farms in Ireland. So if we look at the bee farms, the sheep farms, tillage farms, we see that they have fairly flat emissions profile over the last five, six, seven years. And so the emissions on those farms are not increasing. Um, however, when we look at dairy farms, um, particularly because of the fact that the milk quota has been, el- been eliminated, we see that the emissions are increasing. And they're increasing because the production on those farms has been increasing over time. So there's more milk being produced on those farms, there are more cows on those farms, and there is a greater level of uh, fertilizer usage on those farms. And that has caused emissions on those farms to increase. At the same time, income levels per hectare typically have been trending upwards on dairy farms as well. So farmers are always interested in improving both their economic and their environmental sustainability. What are some actions that maybe you could call out uh, that farmers could adopt and take on in order to improve the sustainability and build on their sustainability at farm level? So what could be done to address that emissions problem? Well, Chagas has done separate work in what's called its marginal 
abatement cost curve analysis. These are basically uh, pieces of research looking at uh, greenhouse gas emissions and looking at um, emissions of ammonia. Some of the standout ones include planting trees. The forestry um, absorbs carbon and helps to address the emissions that are generated, greenhouse gas emissions that are generated by the agriculture sector. So forestry is a standout one. Um, so more, more forestation across the ag sector would be important in terms of helping to address emissions. There are other things that can be done as well. Uh, for example, adopting low emission slurry spreading can help to reduce both greenhouse gas emissions and ammonia emissions on farms. So the use of low emissions technology to spread slurry is definitely one of the um, ways forward. And there are also developments in the area of nitrogen fertilizers that could be deployed by farmers as well. So farmers could uh, switch to usage of fertilizers which have lower emissions, which in turn would help to reduce the emissions generated uh, across the farm. So those are three simple examples of what farmers could actually do to begin to address the emissions problem in the ag sector. Trevor, that's been a very useful overview of the Chagas National Sustainability Report. And I'd like to thank you for watching and maybe encourage you every week to keep an eye on the Sustainable Farm Insights page within the Irish Farmers Journal. This is a partnership that we in Landby Ireland run with the Irish Farmers Journal to bring to you the latest sustainability insights, innovation and advice in order to help you build on your good sustainability actions at farm level. Thank you and safe farming. Next, we'll see the latest in the Animal Health Ireland Cell Check video series. Routine Machine Maintenance Between services, you should examine your machine regularly yourself. Therefore, every day you should check the air admission hole, read the vacuum gauge, listen to the pulsators, watch the milk entering the receiving jar, check the teat ends as the clusters come off, check vacuum shut-off buttons are working properly. Every week, you should check the liners aren't twisted, look for the arrow and line it up correctly. Check the liners are still in good condition. Check the filters on the pulsator airlines. Check the drain valves on the pulsator airlines. Listen to the regulator. Check the regulator filters. Check the vacuum pump oil level. Check the oil drop rate. For more information on any topics covered in this week's Glanby Ireland Dairy Focus podcast, contact your local Glanby representative or log on to glanbyconnect.com.